You're scrolling for a movie to watch. Maybe on Amazon Prime. Maybe on Tubi. Maybe a dodgy website you don't talk about out loud. Then you come across a poster like this. Or this. Or this. And you think, that looks like a sweet horror movie. Bring it on. 30 minutes in, you're still kind of excited. After 45 minutes, you pause the video to look at the poster again, wondering when that character on the poster is going to make an appearance. An hour in and you figured you've stuck with it all this time, you might as well finish it. The movie finishes and you hate yourself. You ask, what the f*** did I just watch? Well my friend, you've just watched a very bad Chinese horror movie. And I'm going to tell you the six reasons why Chinese horror movies suck. Hi, I'm the Artie Dance and welcome to this video. Please enjoy. Almost all Chinese horror movies end in one of three ways. It's a person in a mask, or dressing up as someone or something else, including ghosts. The main character is suffering from a form of mental illness, including depression or schizophrenia. The main character is dreaming or in a hallucination caused by prescription medication or a combination of all these. It's because of being forced to use one of these three types of endings that most people feel very ripped off and cheated after watching what appears to be an engaging horror film only for the ending to destroy everything established. Most modern Chinese horror movies create ridiculous and humorous scenarios in order to at least add a bit of humor or make it so over the top that you don't feel too cheated. Take for example, Ghost in Barbers. The ending reveals that the main character's father has a split personality where he dresses up as his dead wife to extract revenge. The kicker here? The whole movie is set in a barbershop that also doubles as a hotel. A crazy scenario, right? Let's do a quick checklist of the types of things you could expect in a normal horror movie. Strong bloody violence. Undefeatable stalking serial killers. Brain-eating or flesh-eating zombies. Evil spirits and ghosts. Lots of religious iconography. Demented dolls or other inanimate objects like cars. Evil houses or animals. Teenage, unprotected and premarital sex. Shower scenes involving death. Cool. Sounds about right. Now, let's make a list of all the things you could expect to see in a Chinese horror movie. Double and triple crossing endings. Rubber masks. Lots of dream sequences. Lots of characters on medication. Lots of characters with mental illnesses. Green-faced ghosts who float. Overacting and fake screaming. No sex or nudity. Hardly any violence. Hardly any death. No evil spirits. No religion. We're off to a good start, aren't we? Let's take a look at some of these things in a little bit more detail. Okay, this one isn't strictly true, as there are a handful of Chinese horror movies where people do die, such as The Perilous Internet Ring, The Door, Ghost or Lost Souls Island, or Inside the Girls. Characters die, they don't come back, and no one is hallucinating their deaths. But if you've ever watched a Chinese horror movie that started like this, then 100% no one will ever die in the film. And mostly, it's always to do with how the movies end. If it's either all a dream, or everyone is hallucinating, how can they die, right? In the two Haunted Dormitory movies, hilarious movies that have the same cast as the same characters in the same university, all the characters who die are just put under some kind of hypnotic spell and whisked away to an underground bunker for the grand finale. Same thing happens in another Film Moon classic, Haunted Graduation Photo 1 and 2. It really does make the audience feel cheated. In Admission by Guts, all the cast slowly disappear in the film and are seemingly killed. But then at the end, they're alive where the culprit reveals that they're all at his cinema to get revenge for a previous incident. Strangely, the same thing happens in Film Moon's Haunted Cinema 2 movie. Almost the exact same thing. A lot of Chinese horror filmmakers just don't bother having deaths in movies. Films like Love Hotel, The Strange House, 
Painted Skin, The Double Mask, Curse of Chopsticks, Under the Bed series. I could keep going on, but seriously, there's no point in anyone dying. There is one curious example though. I mentioned the door at the start of this section, but this also applies to the movie Haunted Road. The characters are killed in the movie, but it's all a dream of the main character. It's actually a cop-out ending for the door, but in the movie The Haunted Road, it's really good. Horror movies and gore go hand in hand. Now, not all horror movies are super violent or gory, such as the Ring series, but you would expect some blood when you watch a horror movie, right? Right, but not in China. You've probably seen the bleeding eye ghosts in Chinese horror films, and sometimes this is the only time you'll see blood in these films. In very rare occurrences, such as movies with actual killing in them, you might see some blood. I've mentioned the door before, but it's one of the rare slasher films made in China. It has blood, in some scenes quite a lot of blood, but you don't see much of that blood when the characters are being attacked. It usually occurs after the character has died. Lots of other movies have mild uses of blood as well, but not as much as what you'd expect. Question, what would a horror movie be without any sex or nudity? Well, it'd probably be one of those lame American horror movies from the turn of the decade like I Know What You Did Last Summer, or even that lame Friday the 13th movie, Part 6. But in all seriousness, sex and nudity are also synonymous with the horror genre. But I can count on one hand the amount of Chinese horror movies that have boobs in them. This scene in Lift to Hell, a blink and you miss it type scene, is probably about as close as I've ever seen, courtesy of Hong Kong actress Chrissy Chow. Alternatively, you'll get some butt shots in movies such as Inside the Girls and The Door. Lame compared to what you'd get from American and Japanese horror movies, right? As for male nudity, well, you're never going to see the sausage and potatoes in a Chinese film, but you may be lucky to see a butt or two. The government seems to be okay with butts. Sex is a little different. There are actually a lot of Chinese horror movies with sex scenes. They're not erotic or sexy, usually with lots of fake moaning. With again the exception of Inside the Girls, the scenes there are pretty steamy. But these ones are the opposite of that. Oh, and usually sex equals something bad happening to the character. Which is odd considering China's declining birth rate, hey? You think they'd be encouraging people to do more? But the poster has ghosts, or the movie title says ghost, and there certainly seems to be ghosts in the movie. Well, at least the start of the movie. And that's the problem as you'll find out later. Ghosts, supernatural beings, spirits, poltergeists. You name it, they're not allowed, thanks to a 2008 CCP movie restriction called the Film Industry Promotion Law Update that effectively told filmmakers to reduce the terror the ghosts and the supernatural because they go against the modern materialistic worldview of China. You know, all the good stuff. Most of the time, a ghost in a movie will be revealed to be one of the characters in a mask. Take for example, haunted dormitory marionette teacher. The female ghost in the film is actually one of the male characters. Then, in a double twist, the character he is pretending to be a ghost of is still alive. You can't imagine some of these crazy scenarios. Or the film Midnight Melody. Not only is the ghost actually played by the sister, but she will only appear to our main character after he is hallucinating on magic incense. Which is why I don't trust incense when I walk into a small shop burning off some of the stuff. They're going to try and make me hallucinate into buying something. But real ghosts, even though they are a massive part of Chinese folklore and mythology, are not allowed in order to discourage superstition. And here's something interesting. In Chinese folklore, an evil ghost is usually a metaphor for a corrupt official. With that in mind, is there any wonder why the Chinese government would essentially ban ghosts from modern horror movies? Believe it or not, there are actually some good Chinese horror movies. Featuring ex-Chinese screen darling Fan Bingbing, 
The Matrimony from 2007 is an interesting horror thriller that deals with mental illness and paranoia in a more subtle way. 2012's Love Motel is a terrific psychological horror film about a young couple going through some relationship problems when they're forced to stay in a motel on a business trip. In the same year, Korean director Byung Kian released the first of the three excellent Bunshin Saba movies. He is the director of the original Korean Bunshin Saba movie from 2004 and the excellent 2002 Korean film Phone. All three of these Chinese Bunshin Saba movies from 2012, 2013 and 2014 are worth checking out. 2013 delivered what is considered China's best horror movie with the release of The Chrysalis. While I don't agree that it's the best Chinese horror movie, it's still pretty damn good and while watching it you'll probably have to keep reminding yourself that this is a Chinese movie. 2014 saw the release of three very decent Chinese horror movies. First is The House That Never Dies, a cinematic blockbuster that could have had a better ending but was still good all things considering. We also got the very interesting Horror Floor, another horror movie that explores relationship problems and the very excellent Haunted Road, which does horror movies set as dreams right. In 2015, Hong Kong director Danny Pan created the mysterious and some might say divisive movie The Strange House, also known as Psychic, one of the rare mainland Chinese movies that's actually in Cantonese. While in 2017 we got a few very interesting films in the sequel to The House That Never Dies, subtitled Reawakening, and the slasher film The Door. We haven't had anything good since, however, word on the internet is that 2019's Mortal Ouija is quite good, which has a follow-up set for 2022. The House That Never Dies 3 is also due out for release in 2022, so fingers crossed. If you've seen any Chinese horror movies, what did you think of them? I think I know what you're going to say, but I'd still be keen to know more. Thank you for watching this video. Please like it if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thank you again.